And we are back, folks. It is great to be here. We've seen some incredible quarters, finals, matches already. So now we are going to be coming in to our third place match. I've got the wonderful Yachty over here for Ole Miss. We have Vega on my right here for GMU. And we're going to talk to them a little bit before they go and compete for some money. So first off, Vega. First off, you're performing insanely today so far, right? GMU already able to take one game, one that you guys were the underdogs of already. And now you're going up against Ole Miss, a team you guys went up against in round number two. They were unfortunately able to beat you guys. But how are you feeling coming into this underdog, you know, the land environment, first ever Omega Strikers, official collegiate land. How are you feeling? Yeah, well, uh, the game earlier was really close. Um, we lost by one goal, so I'm not really worried. I'm pretty confident in our abilities, and I think we'll win. All right, all right, there you go. And now Yachty, you know, the team that is higher seeded here, and now, like I mentioned, at this land, ready to go. You guys were able to beat GMU, but as Vega just mentioned, by one goal. Are you guys, you guys worried at all? How are you feeling right now? You know, they're a great team. They played us really close. I mean, like you said, one goal, and we actually got 2 0 at the start. And so we were on edge the whole game. Um, just a great team looking for a great competition. We know it's not going to be easy. And so we've kind of been talking, you know, we got some strats ready, and we're just ready to play. All right, all right. Now, one more question for both of you. You have anything to say to good old Yachty over here, Vega? Uh, good luck because we're coming. All right, Yachty, how about you, my friend? How you feeling? Uh, just best of luck to you all. Looking for a great game. We love the sportsmanship. Yes, indeed. Shake the hands. Here we go, folks. Third place match, $100 on the line. Chris, take it away. This will be the first best of three we've had today. So, not to be confused with the game's inherent best of five nature, um, it will be a best of three of that. <laughs> and there you'll see, sorry to interrupt, no, we'll see great. the Era and the Rasmus, both of which we just speak about. <laughs> yes. Be <being> banned. <laughs> I, I think I said that we were getting stream sniped on the last uh, series. <laughs> yeah, I think they're onto something. Yeah, I think they're, I think they're watching us. They're listening to us say who each team plays because we're doing the scouting for them. But <laughs> um, certainly no surprises band-wise. We are back on Atlas's lab, which we've seen a couple times. Still no Amy's app for broadcast. Tears. <laughs> but I don't know, Rasmus would have been banned anyway. Um, we do see the last character that wasn't visible was Juno. So now we know that we're seeing a pretty heavy ranged game again from Ole Miss. They're tried and true, what we've seen multiple times. But again, Dubu and Ash are two of these large characters. And Juno, who's caused so many problems for a lot of these goalies. As we move into this game, one goal barrier goes down on the side of George Mason. Yeah, and one thing that surprises me is that none of these teams have really been picking many brawlers. Not really any of those double brawler comps that really like to get in your face, KO. All of these are more core control focused, which yeah. is interesting me, to me, unlike the beta where you saw multiple double brawler comps. Yeah. Yeah, X and, was going to give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, is that a wow? <laughs> a stray shot from Fluffy Waffles finds a kill onto Yachty's. Uh, or no. It, uh, I'm lost in my own <laughs> words. Oh, the wiggly wobblies, Juno. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, but is is core control a sign of higher level play, do you think? Um, well, it's difficult to answer that. I think there's just it's just a different play style. Sure. Because even on those double, double brawler comps, you're going to see passing. You're going to see the same things. It's just the tools are different for how they want to wow. play as the rune sinks it in a past Spartan's Dubu. Wow. I mean, we. I do want to acknowledge Spartan Dubu is back, by the way. Um, and we, as we get a quick look at um, the oh, wait, wait. Um, Spartan Dubu so far today. Every time this man has been on stream, he has been seemingly flawless. I mean, absolutely clamping down his goal barriers, um, making miraculous saves. Um, so I. I Frankly, expect no less. I don't. <laughs> I don't want to put extra pressure on. Ooh, what? Wow! Barrier. That didn't nah, hit it. Touching around the back. <laughs> I skipped all around that like it was nothing, but I didn't even notice. As there it goes. The top one will fall, but 
one goal barrier each for these teams. Yeah, and what we're talking about, the goalies, you can't sleep on the Fluffy Waffles. I mean, <laughs> we've been seeing Fluffy Waffles, just Kai in general has had such a great presence, but now we're going to see how does Fluffy Waffles correspond to this sort of pressure from Asher and Juno, who have this sort of mixed hybrid in your face and a lot of gameplay. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I want to make sure it was pretty easy to miss, but uh, Dubu did use his core flip there um, in anticipation of a shot that was blocked before it got to him. So, oh, good ooh. angle, though. Good look from Wiggly Wobbly, but nothing to show for it. Yeah, and you'll see those goal gates not quite oh, open wow. just enough for that shot to go in as we see the Dubu trying to hold on from this pressure as they now put it downfield. Oh, Kai stuck whoa. into Asher ult. Yeah, that could have been extremely dangerous, but... Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, the dangerous ball, too, or dangerous core, excuse me, uh, almost going in for Spartan, but again, I mean, just locking down, not letting anything past Ooh. him. Who said that? Not me. Um, <laughs> as Start is able to squeak one by on Rune and just launches it right through him before he was ready. Yeah, and this Rune is so difficult to play against because these yeah. pillars, they just pop up from seemingly nowhere, and you have to really think about where you're clearing it because if you clear, oh, a pillar pops up, then what are you going to do? Right, <laughs> and it comes out like frame one. It can be so sudden when it happens. Uh, but we'll see if George Mason can find a goal off of this early open net or decided yeah. to Spartan's been doing a really good job of holding his abilities. We've seen a couple of times where just holding on just a little bit with that body slam, being able to stop that core has made a world of difference. He's very aware, even when the core is right in his face, even when it's clipping oh. into the goal, he saves the ability. He knows what he wants and what situations work best for him. Yeah, and you'll see in a higher level of play, patience is key to winning these strike wars. If you're even a millisecond off, you lose that strike core, you lose control. It's so important to be patient. Yeah, and I I have noticed that with these players today, too. I mean, it was just, just another Ooh. testament to how good these players are as Yachty finds the widest angle possible to score from across midfield. and. Ole Miss will take an early, early 1-0 lead with little to no response from George Mason. And MVP goes to Fluffy Waffles. <laughs> <laughs> and now we should see the perfect form from the Kai. That's what I'm kind of expecting. Or the Missile Prop. Missile Prop is also very good. And we'll see the Dubu take the perfect form. Uh, the Missile Prop very good for extending the range of that goalie pass. What seemingly midfield really helps the forwards kind of get more pressure onto their side of the field, keep that pressure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will say, on top of now, we're heading into this next round, we haven't touched too much on the black hole this time around, and I think it's just becoming more prevalent. Players are getting used to it at this point. When it, it erupts, it's because the core's hitting it, and not a lot of people are getting taking the damage, or, oh. <laughs> well, yeah. psych. Um, <laughs> Hey, listen, it's called the Caster Curse for a reason, baby. Um, We've had plenty today. Yeah, but now look at this pressure from oh, George Mason. Wow. George Mason finds a stray just squeaking past Fluffy Waffles Kai, and George Mason responds for the first time this game. Yeah, and I want to touch back on that black hole. It's, it's almost like uh, if you played the beta, a stage called Center Stage, where it had this big just diamond right in the middle yeah. it, it interrupts play so hard and especially when that black hole's up the gravity kind of pulling it to the side it can interrupt a lot of passes it can mess up because it'll stun you it'll mess up a lot of just things that you want to do right yeah i mean we're seeing it in full effect there that core going into the black hole bouncing at an awkward angle where dubu was in, unable to respond and now the pressure is beginning to rack up on Ole Miss's side, but I don't think this is gonna be enough on this push forward, as right now, core flips are beginning to rack up. Yeah, keep an eye out for Asher in that core flip. We talked about it earlier, where you know, we haven't seen many Asher forwards today, but the one that we saw 
was extremely commanding as we see the black hole disrupting plays. That's exactly what you were talking about. That was very clearly meant to be a pass to Vega that got skewed ever so slightly by the black hole. Asher now forced to use her floor flip and does pull out Kai's, which one forces Dooku's. But nobody with a core flip anymore, but Rune Ooh. noticeably close, but it won't matter if you're finding angles like that. Very well done by Vega. Asher's special coming in clutch and is sending it at that angle where Fluffy Waffles was unable to respond. I believe that his projectile game was already used before that interaction, and it just led to that unfortunate score. Yeah, and you'll see this Kai, he also has Strike Shot. So not only does he have the Barrage, he has his Giga Blast, he has the Strike Shot, he has so much range potential, especially with this pro uh, projectile uh, missile awakening, prop. missile prop, thank you, uh, where it's just extending that range even further, as we'll see that Barrage doesn't come out in time, hitting on the corner. Yeah, George Mason's goal is open at the moment, and it does get passed in by Rune. Now, Ole Miss is starting to claw back this little bit of momentum. Yeah, I mean, way to stay alive, right? Uh, George Mason looking pretty commanding so far in this game, uh, game two of this series. Uh, or, well, within game one. A little complicated, but... <laughs> uh, yeah, with George Mason scoring the first two goals... Uh, Great response by Ole Miss to, oh, I mean, respond with a goal of their own, but George Mason's still looking comfortably in control as they get two quick goal barriers. I'm falling in love with this Asher wow. forward, man. This Asher, this Asher has been putting up stupid amounts of pressure and has been able to get away with some crazy moments. Rude, oh, oh taking my. out Asher as I speak. Dugu now having to guard the goal, one player down. And that was the pillar you were talking about, Nolan, with just a sudden, I mean, one frame appearing right in front of you and forcing Asher out of position to get caught by a mega blast <laughs> from <laughs> Kai from way downtown. That looked like it was in, but I guess not. We don't have any booth review in this game, so we will say no, sir. But great save there by Fluffy Waffles. Yeah, and that save, it goes back to that patience that we are talking about. Same oh there where you're saving my. it at the last second as Start is able to punch it in on that rune. Just too much for that Dubu to handle. I mean, Ole Miss is showing why they want this third place finish, why they want this cash prize and the Odyssey points. I mean, they are really coming in strong and are beginning to show why they made it to this point. Amazing patience. patience. Wow, that was such an uncomfortable situation for Spartan, but he finds his way out of it just holding his Q button. <laughs> or if you play MOBA, which I'm sure he <laughs> doesn't, I do. But yeah, I mean, the, this patience from these players has been amazing to watch. And even just then, I mean, it's little moments like that, winning little 50-50s, winning, winning strike wars. Um, I mean, just stuff you're not going to see anywhere else. Yeah, and the pressure is just incredible. The banish on the Dubu, but the goal arc making it so what? the banish lasts a little shorter. Makes it so... Oh, and oh, the Dubu oh, accidentally oh, clears it into his own goal. Oh, no. Oh, my heart. Oh. He's been playing so well. Oh, a my gosh. A slight misjudgment, a slight mouse placement error costs you a seer oh, costs you a game and now Ole Miss is up 2-0 oh, oh man. that that feels terrible but you need to shake that off, now is not the time to be getting caught up in that yeah, if I'm this last Juno I'm expecting aerials, yeah and I've heard stories of <laughs> Juno with aerial a lot of people don't like it because Juno goes from a very like tempo based get your blobs out there and make some wacky plays to the potential of playing real aggressive the distance of the jump the blobs flying across the stage it's wild yeah and one thing i want to touch on actually is that kai again he taking extra special with missile prop making it hit even harder yeah. that giga blast is going to send you flying if you get hit by it for sure 
Ulti, but yep, oh, there it is. Wow. <laughs> damage. That was half of Vega's health in one ability, and Lord knows where Vega would have been sent had she been a little lower, but it does not matter when you've got a team like that. Great forward play, great pass from Asher to the wiggly wobbly on Judo to punch in a pretty textbook goal. Yeah, and that Asher ult blocking that bottom half so he only can clear up where that Juno is standing. No place for that Kai to just put it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Great high level stuff we've got at our first ever official Omega Strikers Collegiate land here at Shenandoah University. You are not going to get this anywhere else. But Oh, and we see that Juno dash with the aerial yep. just, just going flying across the map <laughs> trying to make a play. Now keep an yeah. eye on this oh. Juno though because she's in a little bit of danger, Ooh. but that looks so good. Not quite enough. Oh, oh. wow, and there's the aerials. <laughs> Finding her way up to, for a wide open shot on the other side of the net and Kai tries to clear away, but not with a Juno. Yeah, and I'll remind you, that was actually 2v3 because the Kai Gigablast actually had KO'd the Asher. Yeah. So this Juno doing so much work this game. Yeah, Juno uh, turning out to be a very deadly pick coming off the ban of Yadi's era. Rune was playing mean just a moment ago. The black hole was spawning, banished out Wiggly Wobbly, set up the the void to shoot him into the black hole as Juno gets sent down and out of this ring. I mean, the pressure George Mason is putting up right now is crazy and very, very impressive. We'll see you now with an open net for Ole Miss while George Mason still has one goal barrier left. If George Mason can put this away very quickly and very strongly, I mean, Boys, are we going to see another reverse sweep? I mean, I hate to say it. <laughs> George Mason hasn't even won this game yet. Um, so we'll see. I mean, the pressure's there. Black Hole's gone as now this stage is completely open for everyone to walk through. It's When we see this space, we've seen Ole Miss do a pretty good job of controlling the space as the pressure oh, okay. on the goal finally gets through as Ole Miss is beginning to claw back again. That was hard. That sequence was hard to watch for Yachty because so many of those shots, if they were maybe pixels down a little lower, would have oh, bounced no. into the goal, but they kept bouncing back to Yachty, but he ends up finding the goal anyway as now Ole Miss is able to find a pick on the Wiggly Wobbly. Yeah, and you'll see that Rune, he likes to banish people by the edge. And he can just set a pillar up just right next to them oh. as they get a double goal barrier while I'm speaking. But he likes to banish them and then put that pillar right on them. So it'll grow to max size and it'll hit them really hard, sometimes even KOing them. Yeah. It's crazy the amount of value you can get from that setup. Oh, Spartan. I mean, one setup and then suddenly George Mason's goals are down and up. Oh, the two more are banished. Oh, Momentum's oh. flying back. Jeez. But now we're seeing Ole Miss keep, keep keeping up the pressure. But Spartan's Dubu, we've been talking about it all day. Spartan's Dubu is a beast. It's a oh, wall. He's dead. Oh. It's a wall that just got knocked into the blast zone is what it is. Wow. <laughs> oh, are we going to see Ole Miss climb all the way back and put this away? 3-0. This is still a best of three. This game does not determine a third place winner. So uh, you can't panic yet if you're George Mason. This is not do or die yet. But, I mean, you cannot let Ole Miss walk over you 3-0 in game one of this series. This is, this is a big, big point coming up here. Yeah, I mean, look, now both players, or both sides at one of the goal barriers just waiting. Oh, and then it goes. <laughs> Dubu feeling oh, the pressure. No. And Ole Miss goes up 1-0 so far for the battle for third. And that slime and rune combo just too much. There's just so many projectiles on the screen. You got um, but this this is a money match. Um, the We have a thousand dollar prize pool for the winners of today's tournament. Um, and it is $600 goes to the winning team, $300 goes to the second place team, and $100 goes to the winner of this series that we're watching. So, 
this is by no means just a you know Ooh. bragging rights type matchup but we are back on oni village we see a rasmus ban and an Araban again yeah so no adjustments there we'll see how they adjust i don't it looks like they might not even adjust and maybe it's just a salty run back it may be <laughs> a lot of insta picks i'm thinking it's that salty run back wow i mean i don't hate it uh, jim you was right there multiple times i mean they went up 2-0 clearly they are able to score on the kai oh wait a minute no, 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 the Juliet is oh, the spectator well. once again. <laughs> no yep. way I just fell for that this far into our show. <laughs> yeah, so the same comps we're seeing here. But we're in Oni Village. Yeah, the speed up on the side panels really changes things, really speeds up the gameplay. Yeah. It makes the map kind of feel a bit smaller, and then you have your corner kind of goal, pick, goal barriers that you, you sort of give one up, and then the other one is so hard to get. Yeah, for sure. And you mentioned, you know, the map feeling smaller, but with how far out these corner goal barriers go, I mean, it does make the map smaller, and especially with those speed ups. Um, I, I would love to see how, specifically, I would love to see an Asher play, like how she utilizes this um, potentially deadly speed up on the sides to make plays on these goal barriers, as Asher is so good at stuffing through. Yeah, because one goal. one of one of Asher's inherent weaknesses is that she's kind of slow. Yeah. Like, she has so much power. Whoa. And wow. Yeah, George Mason able to get that goal barrier, Whoa. and Ole Miss is down. George go. Mason up 1-0. But you bring up a good point about those goal barriers, Nolan. It seems like the pressure on those things, like, you exact one, you defend the other, and then from there, you just kind of adapt, right? Yeah. And, like, you'll see Spartan did the same thing there. Like, if the core was heading down, he's just like, eh, oh. forget about it. I'll just protect the other one. Yeah, but he does let that one slide. And now you're in an awkward situation if you're George Mason. But um, with zero goal barriers left and Kai holding firm on the other end. But see if Ole Miss can find, find a goal here on the open net. It's not looking like it yet, as Asher is certainly asserting her dominance. Oh! oh. And no. accidentally clicks the elusive, not being able to strike during that elusive, letting the core slide past. Wow, and I'm wondering if these players are starting to feel the nerves a little bit. We did see a slight misclick in the last game with Spartan putting putting the core in his own net. Um, so I don't know. I mean, we'll see if, if maybe the... The pressure's getting to be a little much. Yeah, and you also have to think they've been through five round robin games. The, these Both of these teams have been through quarterfinal games. So they've been playing a lot today. So fatigue yeah. is also a big question as oh. we also see the Asher get KO'd there. Yeah, lots, lots of Omega Strikers has been played today. But <laughs> we see a core flip come out from Rune. Nothing to come of it. Um, pretty well stuffed by Dubu. Yeah, Wiggly Wobbly is now down and out on the stature, looking to regen a little bit of it back, but also Wiggly Wobbly has that core flip. There it is. Not able to get too much value off of it, but just keeping oh. up that pressure. My goodness, the Juno Yachty able to take out the Asher off the top. Man, I really would have liked to see a little bit more from Wiggly Wobbly's core flip there. That kind of just led to nothing. <laughs> And Spartan lets one fly, and now he has his core flip, so he should be okay. But pressure's on now for the rest oh, of George oh Mason. Oh. Never mind. Really, really well played by Start with those timings to react to the core flip. Yeah, and I want to see if possibly our observer can get us some trainings, because it looks like at the bottom that they all have glass cannon, which is going to increase the speed and increase the power of all your shots and abilities if you aren't hit and that just keeps scaling up to a point. So these hits are all gonna be super powerful. Everyone's gaining speed. So oh. it's just so hectic. It makes sense. The game pace feels a lot faster just from watching as we do see Yachty wow. has that core strike. It is two to two right now as we keep getting closer, but I wanna go back for a second. Okay, yes, you there we go. It. Everyone all in this glass game cannons. has glass cannon. I think we were on to something about fatigue. I think it's beginning to settle in a little bit, and it might be the magic word that's breaking the camel's back, is when you hear it, suddenly you begin to feel it. But 
as we continue forward, it's going to be an endurance test at this point. Not only do you need to have amazing gameplay, have these outplays, as we see with the Asher keeping up that pressure, but you need to be just conservative with your energy. Yeah, George Mason holding strong right now with both goal barriers still up. Um, while Ole Miss has an open net, and this is this is it's two to two right now. Like this, this is a very important point, and George Mason is not flinching at all. Let's see if they can punch it in without even letting a goal barrier up, but Ooh. not at this rate with Fluffy Waffles finding a Giga Blast to the corner and sending Yachty packing. But as we finally see the first goal barrier go down for George Mason, nothing to panic about as Spartan still holds strong and. See, start is staggered. Keep an eye on that. See if he might be able to. Oh, yeah, Slime is putting on a lot of pressure. This Asher trying to position. Oh, oh, doesn't whoa. matter. Talk about an angle. I mean, with that overtime speed, with that glass cannon buildup, that strike came in so fast, and <laughs> you ain't reacting to that at that point. Yeah. yeah. And we we're talking about the salty run back. Like, here they score the first set. Like, yeah, They're certainly go. not out of this, so don't count them out. Yeah, and we saw it in game one, right? A 3-0 is grossly unfair to, dis to uh, describe that first game. Um, so, yeah, I mean, sure enough, we find George Mason striking first in this game. Um, and, yeah, I mean, maybe the salty run back was the answer. Maybe we were just overthinking it. <laughs> yeah, and again, this Kai has the specialized training. Oh. So you thought that Giga Blast oh. was hitting hard with Glass Cannon? Yep. Now you gotta worry about it even more. Yep. This is going to chunk you. Yeah, see, oh over half your health. Goodness. Just staggered from that and the Banish. That's craziness. Yeah, I'm stunned. That is wild. Vega finding himself in an awkward situation, although he is still alive and doesn't look like he will be killed, but still very low and staggered nonetheless. Um, Again, we have an open open net for Ole Miss. Yeah, we do see the Asher Wall able to get those bounces. Is it oh. enough? It wow. is. George Mason is beginning to show why they wanted to be in this third place match to begin with. They have such a strong presence coming into this. And now it's really starting to show the level of skill of these players. Yeah, and I'm, I'm curious, I don't remember myself, and I'm curious if you guys do. Was there anyone before Kai that could have taken specialized training away from him? Um, no. No. Okay. Oh, great save, though, by Spartan to protect the other full barrier, but I don't know. I'm just thinking, like, that's that's a very high-value true awakening to let Kai have, but we do see an open net for George Mason, and this is the first time, at least in a while, that we've seen George Mason's net open up first yeah if it was not taken first it was because wiggly wobbly wanted prime time that was very early on as well um we do see the ash wall come through oh man oh look at that pressure as now the core bouncing back and forth the glass cannon speed just causing this match this pace to increase so drastically as dubu has his core flip used and now asher has one as well yeah, so Nolan, can can you tell us a little bit about the levels in this game? Because I'm noticing that Rune and um, Asher are pretty underleveled, but it doesn't seem to have as much of an effect as it used to. Yeah, so the levels are still similar to what they used to be. You're still going to gain nice. level. Ow, wow, as Asher sinks one in at an incredible angle to where Fluffy just could not react. You see the overtime speed really coming in. But to revisit Ooh. that question... Levels. <laughs> yeah, 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 sorry. Yeah. They but are. yeah, they, they're gonna give you. You're gonna get them from the orbs that you'll see pop up. Those will also give you stagger from KOs, from hitting the core. But they're not really as significant as those awakenings. Those awakenings ah. are everything. Though you will, through the awakenings draft, the better you do in a round. So kind of the more XP you get, the higher up you will be in that awakening. So those do kind of matter. Yeah, so they do go hand in hand. And that's not something I realized that um, the like MVP voting is based off XP. And I guess that makes sense. Um, but that is not something I considered. So just interesting thing to keep an eye on as these games progress, right? Um, as the numbers next to these players' health bars is 
generally a pretty good indication of, you know, of what level of impact they're having on the game, but always, you know. Oh, wow, man, we're dangerous seeing, shot. Yeah, we're seeing the regen come in a little bit from Asher, but, I mean, Wiggly Wobbly and Asher are just taking hits. The amount of damage buildup is beginning to hit ridiculous oh. levels as GMU's going up in this series very commandingly. Yeah, I mean, all of a sudden, a salty run back is not really a salty run back. It's yeah. uh, they they clearly were confident in the composition they had Ooh. before. And yeah, okay. And one thing I have to comment on here is you cannot let that Asher get unstoppable, or she will be on your face. You cannot knock her back, and she will just push that core in like you have not seen it before. Nolan. Oh. Nolan. Uh oh. Oh. Uh. Will they and go for it? No. Oh, she didn't take it. And, and that really surprises me. Because oh, the wow. power of Asher forward of the Unstoppable is insane. Man. Surprising I, stuff. Yeah. The playstyle is getting crazy. I do think we're seeing the projectiles from Kai again racking up even more damage, which is going to be a beautiful oh, sight. Oh, Spartan. Letting yeah. two fly there. And we have an early open net for George Mason, but clearly uh, they've, they've been here before and have not folded. I mean, are we going to see two back-to-back 3-0s -back <laughs> and go to game three? We very well might. As oh, oh, maybe not. <laughs> Ooh. I mean, we have had our share of reverse sweeps today. So. We sure have. That's a great point, Nolan. <laughs> as Yachty does find a strange angle off the corner. and yeah, we, I mean, we have a look at these. I mean... Yeah, having the special upgrade, having, like, I'm expecting this Kai to melt people, but the goals are still opening up early. It feels like GMU's not out of this yet as they keep up this pressure on Ole Miss's side of the field. Yeah, and at what point do you start feeling the lack of Unstoppable? Oh. Certainly not yet because Wiggly Wobbly's taking it in his own hands, but, uh, I mean, Asher is kind of getting thrown around a bit. Um, just, you know, absorbing a lot of damage as you would as, you know, in any type of frontline character. Um, yeah, but. and we actually see that speed that Asher ended up taking. It's really putting in work here. So maybe I was wrong, but she's just putting on so much pressure, just living in the go arc of Ole Miss. Yeah, she I mean, look at her. She, yeah, she is flying around the map, and here we go. Oh, there's oh. that pressure. Yep, I, and what are you to do? It's that simple for Vega on this Asher. I mean, this is overwhelming. If George Mason scores one more goal, we are going to game three. Yeah, I mean, Vega has the core flip. Fluffy has the core flip. And they're starting to build up on start and wiggly wobbly. Oh, but oh, now oh, there's oh, the same. Wow. There's one taken down on the side of George Mason. Dubu using the core flip right oh, there. Oh, I like that angle. That looked like it could have been a goal from Vega, but great oh. patience oh. again. Vega's shoving it right down Ole Miss's throat. I mean, just running through them. Oh. And, and if this is a horror story, Asher is the boogeyman. Because <laughs> she is... <laughs> She is coming. We have Amy's app. <laughs> okay, now you hit right on it. These bands are extremely important. Looks like Ole Miss is not hovering Erasmus yet. And uh, I don't want to say it yet in case our voices are coming out in the arena. <laughs> but we will see what the answer is. No, same bands. Okay. Oh, man. Will we see it, it one a more time? <laughs> I mean, it, it looks like it. might just be. We can see Ole Miss's characters. I. It looks like we're going, going salty run back. Yeah, and funny enough, I actually do like Ole Miss's comp just a little better on Imi's app because that middle well, much like I was talking about before, the center stage interrupts a lot of play. And yeah. so those lanes, you can stuff those lanes with those room pillars, those Juno slimes, they can become really hard to pass. And like the Asher, sometimes you can't even get up there towards the goal. Right. And we saw it firsthand. George Mason struggled to deal with that it's level the of run disruption. Back again. I, I love this. <laughs> but we got we have a 3-0 one way, we have a 3-0 the other way. This is game three. 
at the first official Omega Strikers Collegiate land here at Shenandoah University. Collegiate Striker Showdown. Money match, third place. Winner walks away with $100 for their team. Okay, thing I need to point out right away. Aerials was offered to these players because Juno just acro jumped across the map, specifically Wiggly Wobbly. Really? So that is already huge. Wow, yeah, look at that. Huge. Yeah. But also, we have not seen this map on the broadcast, and we talk about two of these goal, uh, I was about to call them posts, but they, there's only one on this map. The goals open quickly. There's just a well in the middle. Okay, right. Yeah, and that's something I want to mention. Don't be deceived by the three hearts on the thing. There's only one goal barrier on this map, and it's honestly kind of easy compared to the others, in my opinion. So it, it's really going to be about these large goal defenses. Yeah, it's, there's really nothing special to it, but so it begins. Vega already finding his first goal right in the face of Fluffy Waffles, and this needs to be addressed. But here are our... Oh, it's... Yes, it's, it's not error. So oh. there's multiple that increase the dash, blink, and haste. So it's going to be Super Surge, Chrono Boost, and Aerials. Those will all increase about the same. They just have different secondary effects. Yeah. Interesting. Well, sure enough, same we're effect. seeing the value. Yeah. As the core flip comes out from Kai and lands on nothing. But Asher has a core flip, core flip of the other her way. own. Yep. There's that Juno leap. Look how far that goes. Look how much you're able Ooh. to get away with as Rune uses that core flip to send it right back at that Juno. Yeah, and you see the core flip doesn't just have to be used to flip the core. You're you right. can KO people with it. You can get creative. Ooh. As a nice save from the Kai there, another nice save, not wow. touching somehow. Three in a row pixel perfect saves from Fluffy Waffles. But yeah, I mean, you said it like with these specific goal barriers, I mean, smack in the middle of your goal, there's only one. I mean, there's not much to it. Um, although, I mean, we're seeing heroic saves from Kai. Oh. As another oh. one sneaks past. The he's angle. Gonna, he's going to send it the whole way back. What a goal in overtime to tie this game one in this money match. I thought that was going to be a goal barrier, much less a goal on the other side. Yeah. Wow. A, I would have lost a bet. Um. <laughs> oh, and again, just sneaking past behind the back of the... Uh, the goal wall. barrier, and that one breaks finally. As, as oh, 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 what a nice save by Fluffy Waffles, barely from the clutches of the Asher and the Juno. Yeah, wow. now we're seeing Vega when they have this pressure is doing so much, but when they're in this middle ground by the well, we've seen them knocked out a couple of times in this round already. There goes Fluffy, there, no, there goes Wiggly Wobbly. In the middle of the map, oh, wow. the Juno leap going across the well and gets a score the other way. And we're seeing that Super Surge increasing that dash range so he can get there from seemingly across the map, just suddenly being able to punch that in on the corner. Oh my goodness, oh. from a passive playstyle to an active playstyle where you are in your opponent's face. As I mean, look at the pressure from both sides. These goal barriers aren't lasting long. Yeah, and the map just feels so wide open when these goal barriers fall. And it's it's deceptive. That black hole in the middle it plays a massive part in every part of this game. But, I mean, it's so easy to knock down these goal barriers and knock open the goal. And it, it really does make it anyone's, anyone's game. God, look at that Juno leap able to just cover so much ground and when you're playing the goalie and you think your option is safe oh, suddenly it's feeling a little bit more rough yeah and this is sort of what i was talking about earlier that once it the core gets on the other side of the field the juno and the rune are just able to seal it off so much Ooh. as wiggly wobbly puts one in putting the pressure back on yeah wiggly wobbly making Kai's ankles wiggly wobble because that was disgusting. I mean, he crossed him up bad after a gorgeous pass from Vega to set all that up. 
great, great play from Wiggly Wobbly. Yeah, I mean, look at this pressure on Asher off the top. Oh, oh my oh. goodness. Really nice slime to put that in. They were too focused on the Asher on the top side where Wiggly Wobbly just puts one in. Wow, no surprise here. MVP goes to Wiggly Wobbly, and now we need to... Okay, we need to Ooh, think. Oh, man. If Rune isn't going for cast to last, I... Well, so no, we, there are good options here. Juno has a couple good options. She goes for Stinger. That's surprising to me. So the other Juno <laughs> now has options between Castellas and Timeless Creator. Ops for Castellas. We do see Big Fish fall to Dubu. That makes sense. Um, Asher Ops for Stagger Swagger. Now, one thing I'm curious about is why the Dubu didn't actually let the Asher have Big Fish, though they're good on both. I'm not sure about the Stagger Swagger. That's, that's, that's a good point. Fair. We'll have to see how much it impacts it later. This Asher already losing most of their health and gone, gone off the top again. Yeah, and she's just dead. Like, the swag, <laughs> Swagger Stagger is not going to do anything if you're dead. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're seeing it in full force right now. Right now, this Asher, we know they have an aggressive play style. We know that they want to play in people's face. But... They also now don't have much HP while these other players are beginning to scale. Oh, but wow. this Juno Wiggly Wobbly still putting in points left, right, and center. And it's it's hard for me to keep track, but is Fluffy Waffles using his projectiles a little recklessly? Is that why he keeps getting caught letting in goals on the far side of his, of his goal? Yeah, <laughs> like, and I'm not sure because he also had a... Juno Slime right next to him from his own teammate, so I wasn't sure if he would, thought he was fine. Thought he was fine where he was and was able to save it and just slips right through. Yeah. yeah well, we are seeing it is a little bit early. We see it there. Oh, oh nice oh, patience. Man. Yeah, using the core flip to get the core away from Old Miss's goal. We do see Kai with a core flip here. And Old dangerous. could come out now, but he's not going to use it. He will die for it. Lose his core flip and let up a goal that is catastrophic for Ole Miss. Oh man, GMU is starting to look pretty. Yeah, there's a rumble, there's a storm brewing, oh. and its name is Asher because this has been overwhelming. I mean, this game it has been a lot of wiggly wobbly, and I don't want to downplay the Juno play right now from both sides, really. Uh, but overall, I mean. Ole Miss has not had the answer that we were expecting them to have. And it's, it's starting to get out of control fast. I think part of it is the fact that we see Ole Miss is playing very clumped. Two characters with so much range, and yet they're not utilizing the fact that they can cover so much space. Oh, as, oh wow. my god, that's mean. That's just mean. <laughs> yeah, and the Kai not able to get there because he's just stunned by the Asher E, the Asher O. Like, what is he to do? He can't get there. And a nicely played shot by Wiggly Wobbly, though. Oh and and such great goodness. coordination, such great communication from the side of George Mason to say, hey, I can lock this guy down if you just launch a Hail Mary at the other side of the goal. He will not be able to answer it. And putting trust in your teammate both ways. <laughs> Asher trusting the Juno to make the shot and Juno trusting the Asher to not let Kai out of his little cage. <laughs> um I mean, great, great stuff we're seeing here today. Yeah, and we'll, we see how important it is to win that set. We see both Junos at the front, but the first one gets prime time, which is incredible on Juno. It lets you have an extra slime charge to throw out and just have on the field to uh, put pressure on. I mean, right now, and we saw it again, Asher sacked the potential wow. for getting unstoppable for hitting the core harder. We see the little hot pepper on the top right. They know that right now their goal is to hit hard and see what happens. I I don't have the answer. I mean, I said it after game two. I, I don't know the answer to Asher, and that we're seeing it now. I this, this character, this pick, this player is so overwhelming and uh, Ole Miss needs to find an answer soon, and maybe the answer is to kill her as she does fall staggered. Yeah, and that is oh. actually where the stagger swagger comes into play, as we see some just Asher just trying <laughs> to 
put pressure on. Right. Yeah, Asher's definitely got a little bit oh, of potential. Come on. Yeah, Send man. that man to the hospital. His ankles are broken. <laughs> this oh, is, no, this man. Is, oh, I don't know. I mean, Fluffy Waffles is playing well. I, I really hope that isn't getting lost in all of this Asher chaos. Um, but Yeah, there just, she goes. Oh, okay. So we'll see. Is this the answer? I mean, Ole Miss needs to score three oh. times in a row. Now oh. two, to, two more times to stay oh. alive in this series, alive in this money match. And I, here, could this be the start to something great? Yeah, and that's what we were just talking about, Kane. They Asher, and then they score. I think yeah. they found their answer, but it's so hard to do because you have to get her staggered, but with that stagger swagger, she recovers so fast. That double pillar doing so much damage to the Asher. Yeah, and we're seeing the value right now. We saw a little Ooh. bit of start and Yari beginning to separate, and that value that comes from it. You don't need to bait your opponent as much anymore on the fact that you can cover so much ground. You need to be covering it immediately. This game is moving too fast. But and now we here see. Here comes Asher. <laughs> yeah, Rune is looking for that goal. Oh, and nice Kai save. able to save it. Throwing the shot down. The blob able to send it back. Asher's looking for that mean setup once again. But now Juno getting a little bit close. Wiggly wobbly. There's uh, the wall from okay. Asher. It's all beginning to rack up, but a lot of cooldowns were just blown. Yeah, nobody particularly close to a core flip anytime soon. So this will be just a lot of just raw abilities and skill. Oh, wow. my goodness. Squeaking by such a huge dubu. And, man, I are we seeing the start of something great? Uh, <laughs> Ole Miss needs one more to stay alive in this series and reset the game score to 0-0 zero, zero in the series to 2-1. But Ole Miss's goal is early open. Early goal barrier down for Ole Miss, but oh, Ole Miss is the able to respond. Here comes Asher. Oh, not quite. And we see possession fall back. Yeah, not really to anyone. Kai pressure. <laughs> er, wow. And now Rune able to keep up just a little bit. There's the Asher sending it up towards the Juno. Great clear there by oh, Fluffy. Oh, nice oh, pillar. I didn't even see it, but a great pillar from start on that signature rune. We've said his name a couple times now, but Yachty gets MVP, and I think that's totally fair, scoring those first two goals. And, hey, all of a sudden, oh, Ole Miss man. is right here. Yeah, I mean, it's real. <laughs> George Mason needs to shake that off, right? You were just one goal away from winning a third pay third place prize money but i mean you're still up in the series two to one um oh my goodness kai with the glass cannon again <laughs> i'm man. getting flashbacks yeah if we could get our observer to, to take a quick peek at awakenings um maybe between the next round but um I, I do want to see what all he has because I, I haven't been keeping track of him as much as him. Oh my god, is so low again. They're taking so much damage. So maybe that's the answer. Maybe that's the answer we've been looking for is to just kill her or at least throw her around so that she can't play her own game. Yeah. Because this whole time, she has been in a game of her own. Now look, when they when Yachty and Start spread out, we're seeing the value. We see that the core is on the right side of the field for the most part, but it's when they begin to clump up that that's when Vega and Wiggly Wobbly are beginning to put up that pressure, Ooh. but now it's beginning to return tenfold as it bounces around the awkward bits of this Wiggly Wobbly still alive. Oh, what the is going on? Slime able to shoot it into George Mason's goal. Ole Miss is up 1-0, and we may be seeing it, Chris. It might be happening again. Oh, my Lord. We get a quick look at Awakenings, and we appreciate that. Uh, but I wanted to take a look at, yeah, what Kai had. He does have Unstoppable, oh. which I did not know. But he does find a pick with his Giga Blast on two um, Wiggly Wobbly, excuse me. But see if Spartan can stall it out. He's been very good at these number disadvantage plays. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing it again. Okay, start and Yachty Ooh. again. Just playing a little close. They really want to give Asher the respect that Asher deserves. But now that Asher's low, I think we'll see Yachty begin to spread out. Yep, there it is. Rune's going to be looking for the KO while getting these setups. It's going to be a matter of Asher getting a little bit of that poke in. 
Rune with the core flip, looking for something, gets it past, shoots it straight oh, up, gets past nice, the dude. Nice. I gotta say, Nolan, welcome to this part of the broadcast. This is, uh, <laughs> this is where this things get. This has been get. electric yeah. all day, and I'm glad you get to be a part of one of oh, these. Oh, it's been electric out in the arena as well. So many hype plays today, and we're seeing it here. Oh Man. my goodness, and look at that. Wiggly Wobbly already losing so much oh. health. Vega below half. This pressure already. The fact that they're beginning to space out. The fact that now we're seeing the value. Now it's all starting to boil up. These awakenings are starting to influence this game to a drastic level. And now, I think, is where we see the true value of these characters shine. Man, I... Oh, the dream scenario for this to go 3-0 one way, 3-0 the other way, and the deciding game, Ooh, oh my, goes to... Oh, and the oh banish on the Dubu! Wow, a great timing from start to send this to point number five, or game number five. Wow, this is first to three wins $100 for their team. This is the dream. Focus, we have a game. We Holy have a game. Moly. Oh my goodness. I... This event has been spectacular, and I'm so, so glad that the first Omega Strikers official LAN, this Collegiate Striker Showdown, is turning out to be everything we ever dreamed of. I'm so proud of all the students that helped put this on, all the students in the broadcast room putting this all together, and we're not even in grand finals, and I'm getting sappy. Yeah. This is amazing. Now, I do want to point out, as we see those awakenings that just came into play, a lot of characters got awakenings that they would enjoy, but look how far Juno's slimes go now. Yachty's slimes are going the distance, but we see this Asher pressure again. Oh. It's coming back in full force. Yeah, Vega did not go anywhere. Ole Miss may have scored two games in a row, but Vega on this Asher is absolutely still here to win. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and that's one of the consequences of really grouping up the Juno slimes. It summons as many slimes as there are enemies in the ulti. So you just have five slimes there. You have the Asher wall. You have Asher herself. It's just too much. Yeah, and now we're seeing that pressure build up again. Dubu doing a great job of being that wall for that one goal barrier. But look at oh Asher's hell. Wow. And that comes from the specialized training that Kai just picked up off the Awakenings draft. Yeah, smart, smart building from Kai, but if he does have his core flip here, he might be forced to use it. Never mind, oh, we're it's seeing, cleared away. We're Rune. seeing Rune's core flip, potentially. Right. Yes, we have two core flips from the side of Ole Miss, but every player in this game is very close to having their core flip as Asher gets blasted again. Juno's oh. core flip just came up, but she oh, uses it for knockback. Yeah, Wiggly Wobbly loses it, but now we see Yachty's, now oh, we see Rune's. my lord! Oh my goodness. What is going on? Vega is staggered, but it's not taken off the map just yet. Oh, oh my goodness. Vega. Passed right to Vega. Vega is here to win. We just saw every core flip used at the same time. And look at Vega's core flip now. Oh, that is very no close way. to coming back. She may be forced to use it to survive here. Okay, never mind. But the goals are open already, and this is, oh, this is it for Ole Miss. Now goals open on both oh. sides, and Ole Miss strikes back. We have two to one. If George Mason scores one more goal, that's it. But Ole Miss is not going anywhere. And that super surge blob bounce from Gino really going the distance, really able to cover a lot of ground on the Ole Miss side. <gasps> oh, 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 she my got it. God, that was wow. evil. That Vega puts it away for George Mason. S waves goodbye to Old Miss. And George Mason, Vega, come into these playoffs as the five seed and walk away with a third place prize. What a tournament. 
Oh my god, what an electric match. And that core flip that you, we were just talking about at the end of the previous round coming into play. She core flips it, immediately able to just smash it in as soon as those goal gates open. And, and great patience. We talked about the patience of high-level players to flip it up and not panic and just like immediately send it in thinking you've got a window because you don't. There were two people standing there ready to send it back to you. But when you're sitting there waiting, you force Ole Miss into a reaction test. And reacting against a core flip shot is near impossible at that distance. Well, that distance... Great play. And frankly, just in general... You look at any game. I don't care if you're playing this game, a fighting game, a platformer. I don't care. It's when you're at that point and you need to react, it's not a reaction. It's a guess. 